Remember Magneton? From Gen 1 to the most recent generation, there's quite a lot of mods based off of magnets. But see, I wanted to make my own magnet-based design for my science-based creature collector, and I didn't want to overlap designs. But that's okay, I just need to avoid looking like a few... Whoa. That's a lot of mods based off of magnets. Now, I'm not saying that they're lazy or anything, Rather, it's actually pretty cool to see all these different designs coming from one concept. So today I'll go over each magnet mod to see what grounds have already been tread before concluding with the design I eventually made. So sit tight as we begin with Magnemite. Ah, one of the first object mods. People have grown to love this flying robot eye. But both Magnemite and Magneton used to be just electric type. Magnetism is often perpendicular to electricity in electromagnetic waves. Heck, it's even in the name, electro and magnet. In fact, you can make a magnetic field just by having an electrical current. But we'll get to that later. So despite Magnemite just wielding horseshoe-shaped magnets instead of having any visible wires or anything, uh, electric does sound like the best type for its line. But in later generations, it was electric and steel type, which is admittedly more fitting. When I was a kid, it kind of bothered me how Magneton were three Magnemites, because magnets always come in pairs, north attracted to south and stuff. But eh, I mean the three balls do look better than just two, but we kind of get to see what a design with two Magnemites would look like, because in generation four, we got Magnezone which is a cool UFO, where the middle one melted into a different shape. Apparently this is called electromagnetic forming, where strong pulsing magnets are used to reshape conductive metals. So, we've seen horseshoe magnets and electromagnetic forming. Scarlet and Violet had another addition to this family, but I'll need to talk about some other designs before we get there. So, they already did a mod based off of magnets. Boo hoo. That didn't stop Game Freak from making nose pass. Look at this cute fella. They're a compass with their nose facing north. That's right, our whole planet has a magnetic field running through it, with a magnetic north and south pole, which are slightly different from the geographical ones. Analog compasses don't need any electricity, so nose pass is pure rock type. Actually, nose pass being a rock type kind of alludes to lodestone or magnetite, which is a naturally found mineral that's a magnet. Like magneton, nose pass gets an evolution in generation 4, where it becomes probopass, with their nose decorated with iron filings, or magnetic powder, or magnetic sand, a same difference. Iron filings are small pieces of iron, and iron is ferromagnetic, which means that it could act like a magnet after being in a magnetic field for some time. I mean, some alloys of iron are straight up magnets themselves. That's why iron filings arrange themselves in this kind of a pattern when there's a magnet nearby, because they're following the magnetic field lines. Nearly 10 years after Probopass, Game Freak made another mod that had iron filings as part of their design. Generation 7 had variants of older mods, including the Geodude line where each design had iron filings, while also alluding to magnetic rocks. Heck, Alolan Golem also has this magnificent beard, in contrast to Probopass's mustache. And you can see that this beard is- wait. Wait, what are you looking at? You wanna talk about the railgun? I mean, I guess I could share a sentence or two. In Generation 7, there were actually two designs that featured the railgun, Alolan Golem and Vikavolt. Remember how electric current can induce a magnetic field just by flowing? That's how railguns use electricity to make a strong magnetic field that shoots out a projectile. Anyways, back to the beard. It's so spiky, just like how iron filings are spiky when they're attracted to a magnet. They're just following the magnetic field lines from north to south. And this is the same pattern we see in Generation 9's Sandy Shocks, a supposed ancient version of Magneton from Pokemon Scarlet. Look at this wild caveman hair. Honestly, I find it very clever to use iron filings in so many designs, but they all have wildly different silhouettes and different uses for the same iron filings concept. Now, some people keep calling these ferrofluids, but that's honestly kind of different. 
ferrofluids are colloids where the ferromagnetic particles are so small that they could be suspended in a liquid. An example of a colloid is milk, where there's fat gloves that are floating in the protein dissolved water. In ferrofluids, the small particles still try to follow the magnetic fields, thus showing a rounder but still spiky pattern. Now some people suggested that Generation 5's ferroseed and ferrothorn are references to ferrofluids. I mean, ferro just means iron, but the more I look at it, yeah, I think it's a plausible reference. But we've seen a better reference to ferrofluids in Pokemon. Not in a mon, but rather in a move. Welcome to Generation 8. There are giants, and these giant mons have their own special moves. Specifically, Dynamax Steel Spike features some lovely spikes that look wet and rounded, very much like a ferrofluid under magnetism. Wait, so you might be asking yourself if Melmetal is a ferrofluid? I'd say it's mostly not. The body just looks like other liquid metals like mercury or melted gallium, which aren't that magnetic compared to the iron in ferrofluids. Now hold up, Meltan gets magnet pull. Maybe it has to do with electric wire sticking out because yeah, both gallium and mercury are pretty weak at being magnets themselves. But other than that, I think we've gone through most of the mons that really feature magnetism as an inspiration to their design. So now, it's my turn. So to repeat, I'm making my own decks of colorful creatures, each representing a science concept. Now looking at Pokemon, they've done a lot of magnets, so it was initially hard to find an angle that they haven't explored yet. How could it possibly make a design of magnetism? Oh, hello there. Now this is a right hand rule. There's multiple variants of these, but at the end of the day, it's mostly about how you could treat magnetism to be perpendicular to electricity. You could use your fingers to find the direction of the magnetic field compared to where the electric charge is going. But what I want to look at is where you could curl your fingers and your thumb is showing where the magnetic field is going. Now what you got there is called a solenoid, one of the basic shapes of an electromagnet. So here's solenite, a solenoid velamite. I made the bottom rounder to make this look more like a cute little electro wizard kind of a guy. My project is going to flip the sprites a lot, so in the lore, I'd say that their eyes change shape according to the shape that they make with their hands. The positive and negative ends in the eyes and hands are references to the caps on the battery. I've also rounded out the coils on the design um, because I'll be flipping it a lot. Just know that in reality, it's a coil, not just independent donuts. And the same goes for its evolution, not toroid. Now, if you treated the solenoid like a cylinder and wrapped that cylinder around into a big donut, that's called a toroid. Again, the wire in reality is wrapped around. I turned them into knobs in this design. It made it cleaner and also flippable. The magnetic field of a toroid looks something like this. Now the hands here are referencing how 3D lines are drawn in physics. A dot means the line is coming out of the page like an arrow going out, while an X means that the line is going into the page like the end of an arrow. So yeah, the closed hand is where the attacks usually come out of. Whew! Alright, we went through a lot today. I started this journey by asking how I could make a design of a concept that Pokemon already happened to make, but it turns out even Game Freak goes over the same concepts. What really matters is how you use that concept. Find different silhouettes, reference different applications. Here, I'll tell you a hint. We've only talked about ferromagnetism today. There's actually two other types of magnetism, para and diamagnetism, which are weaker, but it's where both poles attract or repel these kinds of material respectively. There are other applications you can reference too, like MRIs, like this wonderful fake mon by Poke.core on Instagram. So don't let an existing concept slow you down, you can always find a way to make your own spin on it. I personally think inspirations alone are a bit too vague for anyone to own. Just make sure you're creative with it so that your design can stand out. Actually, I have another line of mons that's kind of related to magnetism, but we've already gone over a lot today. I'll be going over that in a different video. 
I got a whole video series going on here going over my STEM based region, so subscribe if that interests you. And I'll have other video essays like this to tie in gaming with some cool stuff from our own world. So thank you for watching till the end, and I'll see you next time.